In this video, I'll be showing how you can build your very own simple chop saw table. One of the big benefits of a chop saw table is being able to make multiple cuts at the same size by setting up a stop block. Any project that requires a lot of cuts that are the same size will really benefit from a chop saw table. To start, you'll need a bunch of 2x4s. Here's the cut list. 8 at 36 inches for the legs, 12 at 22 inches for the side cross members and table supports. 6 at 48 inches for the front and back cross members. You'll also need two 2x8s that are about 33 inches long. These will create the table that the saw sits on. You can adjust them to fit the width of the saw and two pieces of plywood or OSB to make the tabletops. The first stage of building will be to create the four sets of leg assemblies. The lower cross members can be placed lower or higher depending on your storage plans. I didn't put a cross member on the front as I plan on putting some wheeled tools underneath so they are out of the way when I'm not using them. At this time we'll only be attaching the upper and lower cross pieces. The support boards for the saw will come later. With the leg assemblies built, it's time to connect them together with the 4 foot 2 bys. I screwed these into the legs so as to reduce the chance of splitting the ends and to keep from screwing into end grain. With the two tables built, it's time to add the boards that will support the saw. You'll have to do a little math here and see how high the table of the saw is from the base, and then make sure your saw will be level with the tabletops. My saw was less than 3.5 inches high, so I just sandwiched a 2x4 between the upper cross piece and mounted a second board underneath. If you're going to do the same, make sure you don't push them too close or you might have trouble getting the boards in later. Most chop saws will have some holes designed for mounting it to some sort of a table. Measure the distance between them and mark that out on the boards you'll be using for the supports and pre-drill some holes so you can affix the saw with leg screws. Because the saw will be sitting on two boards, the space from front to back isn't overly important as the boards can be moved around to line up correctly. Depending on what you're using for the tabletop, you can possibly skip the step. I'm just using some scrap half inch OSB I had lying around so I figured the extra support wouldn't be a bad idea. It also gives me something to screw the fence into. You'll probably want to mount the 2x8s to the two tables so the saw can't slide around and get out of line with the fence that we'll be adding to the tables. A few screws should do the trick. The most difficult part of this project is lining up the saw's height with the tables. I used some scraps of rubber I had and some washers to match the height as perfectly as possible. The best way to do this is to lay a long level across the saw and tweak the four leg screws until the level touches all surfaces evenly. The rubber should be fairly rigid, something from a floor mats or mud flaps would work well. The tabletop is just mounted with a handful of screws around the perimeter and one in the center support brace. I gave the tabletops a light sanding to remove any slivers or sharp edges. 
With the tables built and the saw mounted, it's time to start working on the fences. I built these out of some 1x4s. Because these will be used as cutting guides, it's important to select the straightest boards you can find. The boards are joined together at a 90 degree angle. I added some support braces in the back to keep the upright square and to support the T-Track. I made the fences the same length as my T-Track, which was 4 feet. I used my table saw, a chisel, and my router to clear out the channels for the T-Track. I made a series of cuts on the table saw, then broke the strips out with the chisel. I did a final pass on the router to clean out the bottom of the channel. I could probably have done the entire process on the router by doing a series of cuts. Not sure if this was faster or not. With the channels cut, it's time to install the tracks. They came pre-drilled with holes every foot or so, so it was a simple matter of using some wood screws to affix them into the channel. I joined the fence parts with pocket screws and glue. Brad nails would probably have worked as well, but I needed to pull a bit of warp from the fence, and I feel like the screws did a better job of doing that. The inside corners got some simple triangle supports that I just glued in place. I made a simple stop block, just a square, a rectangle, and uh, a square with an angle cut off the side. Not sure what shape that would be. I joined it all with glue and brad nails. I gave it a good sanding so it wouldn't hang up on anything when I'm sliding around on the fence. The T-bolt slides into the T-track and provides super holding power. Because the face of the T-track is flush with the wood, I can tighten down the stop as much as I want without worrying about the track pulling out of the fence. Mounting the fences is similar to mounting the saw. Get a long level or piece of known straight stock and line the fences up with the fence on the saw. Do this on both sides, of course, and screw the fence to the table. 